Hi everyone, it's Ash from FPL Hints, here to talk about the Euro Fantasy quarterfinals, better known as Match Day 5. Before we get into it, if you're able to like, share and subscribe, that will be greatly appreciated. So what I'll do is I'll review the games of the round of 16, a reminder of the uh, team, quote unquote, that I had in the round of 16 and how it performed, reminder of the rules ahead of Match Day 5, we'll preview the games, also, we'll look at what transfers I would make if I didn't have the wild card, and what transfers I would make altogether if I did have a wild card. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it and into the games. So, first of all, Switzerland against Italy. This was a completely different Italy team from Euro 2020 under Mancini, Chiellini, Bonucci, completely different. And team lacked energy. They were lucky to get to the round of 16. Of course, for those that can recall the probabilities that we looked at ahead of match day four, it almost was a 50-50 split. And in the end, the best team won. And Switzerland proved just too much for Italy. And in the end, it was a fair result. And how it impacts my own uh, selections, I only picked one Italy player, didn't really fancy them at all. I thought maybe Italy could grind it out to a nil-nil, maybe nick a one-nil, get to penalties, had Bastoni. So that's the only uh, player that I lost as a result of that match. On to the next match, Germany against Denmark. Again, Germany who had a, somewhat of a uh, awkward third uh, group stage match against Switzerland, but then again, just powered their way through against Denmark. And with the choices that I had, Rudiger and Neuer worked out fantastically with the uh, double clean sheet banked. And of course, Rudiger had 12 ball recoveries from that match, which resulted in a mega 13 point haul, which was boosted by the uh, player of the match points as well. So fairly pleased with that. Having said all of that, I still I had uh, Musiala, who would have been my hypothetical captain for match day four. But I also had Wurtz and had I actually um, been playing this game literally, I would have probably have shipped out uh, Florian Wurtz for Gundogan and then I wouldn't have had the blank there. Somewhat surprised that he was like ultimately uh, benched, but again, probably tactical and it worked out for the best for Germany there. So again, as a result of that, Germany, of course, progressed to the quarterfinals and on to England against Slovakia. An absolute nightmare of a tournament for England. England have not been at the races. They were favourites to win the tournament before a ball was kicked ahead of match day one. And to be perfectly frank, with the way that they've been coached, with the, the lack of energy, with the lack of drive, very lucky to have even scraped this result against Slovakia. Of course, in terms of the players that I had, I didn't really bank any strikers and choose you know had Bellingham as my only attacker and luckily he uh, worked out for the best in this selection but of course a triple up with England's defense was a complete fail as Slovakia found their way unpicked that defense and ultimately scored so triple clean sheet wipe out there again Kane out of nowhere then scored in the early minutes of extra time and Again, for those who owned him, you know, fair play to you. But I just couldn't really back Kane. And ultimately, England are through to the um, quarterfinals in the supposed easier side of the draw. So, again, the players that I've got, all four of them uh, would technically be retained. And then on to uh, Spain against Georgia. Of course, Georgia showed a lot of fight in the group stages. And they even got that early goal against Spain in the round of 16, albeit it was an own goal. But then, of course, Spain showed their class with their four goals across 90 minutes and the best team won there as well. And Spain are probably one of the few teams, if not the only team in this tournament, the supposed one of the heavyweights that have consistently performed in each game. Whether they've peaked too soon remains to be seen. And of course, Spain will be playing Germany in the quarterfinals, which will prove to be a uh, tantalising game. 
uh, onto France against Belgium. France, who again had Mbappe injured early on, there's reports that he's not used to wearing uh, the mask, which isn't really helping him. But then again, fairly drab match. People moaned about England against Slovakia. And then France found their way through an own goal, another own goal. I think own goal is now top scorer in this uh, tournament and got the win. And France are awarded with their next match uh, against Portugal in the quarterfinals. And talking of drab matches, Slovenia, again, they've just really like tied out England in the group stages, did the exact same to Portugal as well. Ronaldo, of course, had that penalty Missed it, but then made amends during extra time. And then Slovenia, all of the penalties were saved and fair play to Portugal, scraped through in the end. And yeah, rewarded with a match against Mbappe's France. And of course, on the probabilities, Portugal are far from being the favourites in this match. It's really a France win in the quarterfinals. Again, all of this will factor in the players that I'd want to pick if I had those three transfers at hand, as well as um, if I had unlimited transfers. And I'll do an illustration for both. Netherlands against Romania. Again, Romania started off the Euros in like sensational fashion, but then Gakpo and Marlon were too good in the end. Again, Netherlands scored quite early, got the two goals towards the end. And yeah, but you could say that the best team won there. Are the Netherlands the dark horses? And in their side of the draw, of course, they've um, got England potentially or Switzerland. But then you look at how they've done in each of their matches. They, of course, lost to Austria in the final match. They drew against France and then they uh, beat um, Poland as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens for them in the quarterfinals where they'll be facing. Turkey, who again, Ragnik Ball really did wonders for Austria in this tournament, but then against Turkey and the match again, of all the matches in the round of 16, the match with Austria and Turkey was end to end, probably one of the more exciting matches. And Turkey, again, this was on percentages. I think Austria were the slight favourites, but then Turkey um, ultimately. Uh, got the breakthrough very early on and then of course doubled the lead Austria pegged one back but it wasn't enough so in terms of how that impacts the team that I had of course Gakpo got a fancy return so did Yamal Musiala got healthy returns as well as did Bellingham as did Simons and then of course blanks for the uh, defenders Neuer would have been the goalkeeper that would have retained so fairly satisfactory for my hypothetical Euro fantasy team. And of course, I've only lost out on Bastoni and uh, De Bruyne. And of course, if we just remind ourselves of the rules before the quarterfinals, we've got three transfers. And yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have technically had to get rid of uh, Wurtz, but again, is he a rotation risk? He might even start um, in that match against Spain. But for the sake of, um, I guess, Illust not illustration, but if I was to just do three transfers, clearly Bastoni out, Van Dijk in, Nico Williams would come in for De Bruyne, and then Ruiz would come in for Wurtz. And of course, with that sort of team that I've got, there's three million in the bank. And of course, by backing Spain, I'd hope that they beat Germany and then they'd beat potentially France or Portugal in the semi-finals as well. Again, that was one of the downsides that I had with the team that I had for the round of 16, that I didn't back Spain with a quadruple up, despite considering how good that Spanish team has been in this tournament. And just looking at the players, actually, um, if I add them all up, actually, um, Carvajal, Ruiz, Yamal and Williams makes it four. And then again, with Van Dijk, I've got now a triple up of uh, players from the Netherlands. Other players that interested me, I mean, Marlon with that brace, you'd expect him to be in a, with a good chance to start. But of course, he's a forward. So in this illustration, I couldn't really 
um, pick him. And then looking at some of the other players as well who have really come to the fore. You've got some of those Turkish players as well, potentially, but I don't fancy them against the Netherlands. So if I just base this, if I just bring this up to the knockout chart, go all the way up, England against Switzerland. This is really make or break for England. On paper, it's an England win, but Switzerland have shown fantastic form. So I would back England in this instance. I wouldn't necessarily pick any Swiss players um, so far. Netherlands against Turkey. I would back Netherlands here. Portugal against France. I would back France. Spain against Germany. I think it'll be a very close match. But I think Spain have enough in their locker to overcome Germany in this particular fixture. So that's what the um, thinking is in terms of the transfers as well if i was to do a wild card for match day five just going to share my screen here so rudiger against um spain i've got the double up i probably get rid of the goalkeeper just rudiger just for the recoveries alone i think he's a good pick to have England against Switzerland. I think England have a good chance there to get to the final. So I would want to keep Pickford. So the goalkeeping front, I would say that there's potential for the goalkeeper from the Netherlands. Let me just um, sort this by points as well. So just get this here. Where is he? Bruggen. In he comes. Again, prices don't really... Um, matter at this point here. So the Bruggen is there. Again, just because of that massive budget, not really bothered about anything beyond that. Stones and Walker. It's, again, I'd expect Stones to start, especially with the Gehi being suspended for the quarterfinals. And with Walker, is it... <laughs> Would I really justify him? I'm just going to sort this by points right now for defenders. I want to I want to keep four England players in my team. Of course, Bellingham's on a yellow card as well, but I, I would ultimately keep him as well. Um, France against Portugal, and then France would have somewhat of a tricky semi-final as well, but I probably would get Koundé in as well, and he comes. So the defence, just looking at England's defence, just flick this here. Just looking at the points today. Again, Gehi, just a shame, top point score. I'd probably keep the defenders and the keeper. So triple up of defence. I would keep Bellingham without a shadow of a doubt, who has had a great start to the tournament. And then towards that final match, finally showed a bit of spark again. So I would keep Bellingham as well. In terms of the um, forwards as well, Yamal, who I know some wouldn't want to get him in because they feel he's a like negative out of position player. I think the justification would be I've got Gakpo, got Mbappe as well. Definitely wouldn't want to get Ronaldo or any other Portugal player at this moment in time, but I would be backing France for the win there. So Musiala, got him in. If I just change my midfield here as well and just get rid of England. So I've maxed out my England players. Just looking at the points that are available as well. Of course, uh, Fabian Ruiz, going to get him in because I'm backing Spain over Germany. So it works out Ruiz in. I think that's fairly no-nonsense pick. 12.5 million to go. But again, doesn't really matter with that massive uh, budget that's available. So just looking at the French midfield for a moment. Again, no one really stands out. I think, is it N'Golo Conte, highest uh, point scorer for France? So I can't really justify any other French uh, midfielder here. So let's just go to the other options that are available. So... I think the only other option I could go for 
would probably be like a Rodri. I know ball recovery in, in UEFA Fantasy Champions League. He was really good at that. So, again, I'm looking at the players that I'd expect not only to be in the quarterfinals, but in the semifinals. And just as a reminder that ahead of the semifinals, you get four transfers. So you really want to nail the transfers for this um, quarterfinal phase. Again, let's assume Gundogan won't progress here. But, of course, I've got some German players here as well. I'm going to go for Nico Williams. Again, just remind ourselves of uh, Nico Williams' form. Didn't play in that final group game. You could say he's rested. Got the assist and a goal in match day four. And in match day six, he also, again, put in a good performance. Player of the match as well. I think that would be a good shout. So I've now got quadruple Spain in this uh, illustration. Just looking at the forwards now, as in how would I potentially rejig this as well? And just sort this by points as well. I think who, who are the misses here? Ndoy of Switzerland, Harry Kane. Would I want to rejig and get Harry Kane in? I could lose a England defender potentially in this illustration, but then it's just not much else. I mean, let's just say, okay, Yamal was a was a pick I had on the basis that just again, I, I know he's like a negative out of position player, but let's get Marlin in. So 5.1 million in the bank. And let's just get rid of the filters. So in this illustration, I've got quite a lot of change in the bank. I've got 5.1 million. So I'm backing the Netherlands to progress to the uh, semi-finals. In fact, I'll get rid of Koundé, actually. And there's a Dutch player I do want to bring in. And it is Van Dyke. If I just sort this by points now. Simons, Marlon, Carvajal. Have I already picked four Dutch players? One, two, three. I've got Verbruggen, of course I have. So I think I would have to keep Koundé in the team. Oh, Hernandez as well, actually. Let's just see how Hernandez has done. Started all the matches. Let's get Hernandez in. So, again, I'm backing the players who I think will progress into the semi-finals. So, if I just do my super zoom in as well, just for further like scrutiny, here is my hypothetical wildcard team for match day five. So, the Bruggen in goal because. I'm going on the assumption that the Netherlands will beat Turkey in the quarterfinals and then they'll face potentially England or Switzerland in the semifinals. Hopefully it's England. Again, Pickford against Switzerland. I'd assume that England would beat the Swiss and then face the Netherlands. So I think those two picks make perfect sense to me. On to the defence. An unchanged... Uh, England lineup of Stones and Walker. I probably would have gone for Gehi instead of Stones if he wasn't suspended. And then Carvajal, Rudiger, and Hernandez. Again, no nonsense picks. Carvajal with his prowess in defense. And he has shown some attacking threat as well. And then Rudiger with the ball recoveries, absolutely sensational. And then you've got Hernandez for France, who's shown what he's capable. Off as well so i feel that in this instance the, the the only player from this back line that i would ex probably expect to not feature in the semi-finals would be rudiger assuming that spain beat germany so that's one player already lost but you can't have them all onto the midfield musiala again arguably the player of the tournament so far but then the worry is against this Spanish team, 
there is a risk that I would ultimately lose him for the semi-finals. I've filled the two free uh, midfield spots with Fabian Ruiz and Nico Williams because I'm backing Spain to beat Germany. And of course, if that doesn't work, then I've well effectively lost uh, four uh, slots there. Bellingham for England, backing him. Of course, if he gets a yellow card in the quarterfinals, I'd miss him in the semifinals. Hopefully he's a bit careful there. And then Simons, who I feel has been very underrated for the Netherlands, missed out on a few chances here, that, here and there as well. I think he is the best or the only uh, option in the Netherlands midfield that is worth picking. So he is one of the players that I'll be retaining. And then onto the forwards, again, with the assumption that I'd expect to see these players in the quarterfinals as well as the semifinals. And Bappe, hopefully he can get adjusted to wearing that mask and finally scoring some goals in open play. Gakpo, who I'd argue is another player of the tournament as well, if not uh, Musiala. And then you've got Marlon as well with his brace against Romania, which hopefully will secure him a starting berth. And if I didn't have a wild card and I was making transfers, I'd bring in Van Dijk, I'd bring in Nico Williams, and I'd bring in Fabian Ruiz anyway. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Of course, if you're chasing, then you'd certainly be taking more risks. And if you've got a very high rank and you're playing it safe, then by all means, you'll probably go for the safer picks. I've just done this on the assumption that the teams that I'm picking players from, I'd expect them to feature in the quarterfinals as well as semifinals. So there aren't really a lot of differentials. I feel that a lot of the upside would have probably have been gained within the group stages. So the only real significant shifts that you could get at this stage is if you're backing the players who are from the teams that aren't expected to reach the um, semi-finals and they end up there. So there you have it. Kept it nice and safe, but I feel that all of them are no-nonsense picks. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And as always, if you're able to like, share and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. Take care and all the best.